Are you thinking about leveling your lawn? I'm currently in my fifth season of leveling this lawn, and there's a few things that I've learned along the way that I wish I knew sooner. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys 10 mistakes that most beginners make, including myself that I've made, when leveling their lawns and what you could do to avoid them. And if you've never leveled your lawn before, feel free to ask any questions. I'm sure myself or anyone else in the comments can answer for you to help get you started on the right path. So the first mistake that I see people doing is not using materials like dirt and sand that are fully dry. Nine times out of 10, if you get up some dirt from your local dirt supplier, you pick up some sand from them, it's gonna be left outside under a canopy. It's gonna be rained on all the time. So there's two things you could do. A, you could try to get to a supplier that has dry materials, or B, if you're using sand, for example, what you could do is you could put out the sand on your driveway if you have an asphalt or a concrete driveway, spread it onto the driveway with a landscape rake, and then you could let it dry for a day or two under the sun. And this will work out great, but the only problem is you wanna make sure that it doesn't rain immediately after you put it on the driveway. Otherwise, that's just gonna make your situation worse, and we don't want that. I remember first time I leveled my lawn, I went to Lowe's and I picked up a bag of soil and I just immediately threw this one bag of soil on my lawn and it was so wet and clay-like and it was clumping. And when I tried to level my lawn, I just ended up making it more bumpy. So moral of the story, make sure that your materials are bone dry before you put them on your lawn because that's how you're gonna get the most complete level surface and be able to massage it into the canopies. If you're leveling your lawn, you're probably wondering, should I use sand, soil, or should I use both? Well, here's the way that I look at it. There's going to be people that are gun ho for sand and people that are gun ho for soil and compost and all that. So I personally used a 50-50 mix of sand and soil when I leveled my lawn. That's because there was some crazy ruts in here. This thing was like the Grand Canyon. So when I used that mix, I got it pretty much mostly level. And now that I'm getting to the point where I'm finally starting to get a golf course lawn, I'm using just sand to cap it off so I can get that perfect smooth flat finish. And another big mistake that I see people doing is they'll try to level their lawn with just soil and think that that's going to make the lawn level. But really that's not the case. You guys have to keep in mind that soil is an organic matter and over time it's going to break down and you're just going to get those lumps again. So what you need to do is at least incorporate some sand into the mix of soil so that when you level it, the sand won't break down and you'll still have the nice leveling properties. I could see where people are coming from where they don't want to throw sand onto their lawn. But at the end of the day, if you want to get those leveling properties, you're going to have to incorporate at least some sand into your soil to make sure that it stays level over time. Now, here's the thing. Most people don't realize that all this top dressings from Lowe's and Home Depot, it actually contains more sand than soil in it. So really when you buy those bags, you're already kind of buying a pre-mixed bag of sand and soil that's mostly sand. So don't feel bad about throwing sand on your lawn. Now another mistake that we have to talk about is something that I personally made and I don't want to ever make that mistake again and that's choosing the right grid size sand. You might be tempted to get an all purpose sand because why not? It's all purpose. It should work on the lawn, right? No, you definitely don't want to use all purpose sand because the pebbles in it are humongous and it'll get sucked up into your mower and if you're real mowing you could just say goodbye to that reel and it's just bad news. So you're definitely going to want to skip out on the all purpose sand. Opt for something more like this which is a mason sand. It's more fine as you can see there's dust going everywhere but at the end of the day that's what you're going to want to use because you're going to get a more flat surface and it's going to incorporate down into the soil better. Over here you see all these large pebbles. This is when I used all purpose sand to level my lawn a few years ago. And it's been already like three years and you could still see these pebbles are sitting over here on top of my soil. So if there's one piece of advice that I could recommend to you, do not make the same mistake that I made. Now what I want to talk about is your height of cut right before you level. You're probably thinking if I leave the grass blades taller, then it has a better chance of survival and getting through the grass. But really that's not the case. What you want to do is you want to scuff the grass down as far as it can go. So if you have a rotary mower, bring it down to its lowest setting. Or if you're using a real mower like a Greensmaster, I personally like to put it right under a half an inch. So like about 0.40 inch inches I find the best. Or what I personally recommend for most people who don't have a powered real mower is to get a Scott's real mower because you could set the cutting height all the way down to a half an inch. And that's gonna give you the best leveling surface. And the reason why this is, is when the grass blades are short, you can massage the dirt or sand into the grass canopy 
and they'll be poking out through the sand so they can get some sun so they can keep growing and not get smothered. Because when you leave the grass blades tall, there's more mess that's put down on the grass blades and when you try to massage it in with the lawn leveler, it ends up just getting buried underneath. Another mistake that people make is they try to level in non-optimal conditions. And what I mean by that is in the springtime, they'll get a little overzealous about taking care of their lawn and they want to level really early. But really you want to wait until your grass is fully growing hardcore. One piece of advice I can give you is make sure you hit the lawn with at least a half a pound of fast acting nitrogen about a week before you start leveling. If you're looking for a good fertilizer that will push a lot of top growth really fast, I could recommend the Scott's Lawn Food in the green bag. Just throw about a half a pound to three quarters of a pound down about a week beforehand and you'll be all good, ready to go. Another mistake I wanna talk about, well, technically it's not a mistake, but you'll definitely thank me later, is not having one of these gorilla carts or a similar kind of cart like this that you could pull around. The wheelbarrows are just too much work. You're gonna have thousands of pounds of dirt or sand. You're gonna be lugging it around. You're gonna have a heat stroke. You're gonna to fall to the floor. Trust me, it is no good. So make sure you invest in one of these Gorilla carts because it is gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier. You could put like two, 300 pounds of material in here and you could just pull it around super easy. It's not gonna break your back or anything like that. And it's gonna make your leveling project a hundred times easier, trust me. Get yourself a Gorilla cart. All right guys, I told you that I'm gonna save one of the best tips for last. And this is gonna be a very simple guide on how much material you specifically need to level. And the general rule of thumb is when you level, you don't wanna go more than a half an inch. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but this leveling thing is gonna be something that's gonna be ongoing over multiple seasons. It's not gonna be perfect that after one season. And when I give you these numbers real quick, you're gonna be like, oh my God, that's a half an inch. It's that much material, yeah. So you're gonna need one and a half cubic yards of material, whether that's sand or soil or a combination of both, it's gonna be one and a half cubic yards of material per thousand square feet to cover a half an inch. Now, some of you guys might not be 100% familiar with how cubic weights work. So just to simplify it for you guys, one cubic yard of sand weighs 4,000 pounds, which is two tons. And you need one and a half cubic yards of sand to level 1,000 square feet. So that means you're gonna need 6,000 pounds of sand just to level 1,000 square feet. Most of you guys watching, I'm guessing your lawns are between the sizes of 3,000 square feet and 10,000 square feet. So we're talking about tons and tons and tons and tons of material. But hey, if this is your guys' first time to my channel, my name's George and I'm obsessed with my lawn. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you found any value in this content, hit that like button. And with that, this is George from Princess Cuts. Peace. <laughs>